Welcome to a new look at an ancient view of the universe. This is my new geocentric plane flat earth enclosed 3D model using Google SketchUp. In it I've taken inspiration from ancient cosmologies like the Egyptians, the Vedas, the Hebrew, Japanese, Enoch, Mayan, and many others, including modern flat earthers like Josh Wall, who made WAH last name on YouTube, who made a video showing the astro plate uh, demonstrating how a reflective firmament can explain star trails in the southern hemicircle using an astro plate. So, what I've done is made a 3D model here with the astro plate, and I want to show how it matches the ancient cosmologies. So, if we look here at the Vedas down here, you can see an earth plane that extends. 4 billion miles. It's huge. But we're only looking at this earth plane in the center, this little green chunk in the center. That's our earth plane. You notice it has a chariot for the sun, the moon, uh, and planets, but it has a starry plane up here, which is an astro plate that I've added up top, up here. And Mount Muru, I've put as a vortex style. If we look over at the Egyptians, they have a similar cosmology. They have Nut, which is a female. Uh, who holds the stars above her, and the same thing with the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe. You have Sheol, which is Hades, or the underworld, and I don't depict that here in this model, but it's got the same thing. Water's above with the firmament and everything between it, but I'm explaining all that in a more realistic view using an astroplate. So how does this astroplate work? All right, let me get rid of the earth plane, firmament, and atmo plane, the vortex. And now we can look at how this works compared to the luminaries and rotation itself. All right, I have an animation here from January 1st, 2016 at midnight to January 5th, 2016 at 6 p.m. If I start playing this animation, it rotates the astro plate. And we can see that from the top half, it rotates clockwise, and from below, it rotates anti-clockwise. Now that matches star trails of what we see in the sky. But how does that work compared to observations? So if we pause it here and bring back the Earth plane, and Google SketchUp runs a little slow, so you might lose some features in the astro plate. And we come to Tex <clears throat> Texas, where I'm from, which is over here. I want to show how this model matches observations. All right, there we go. Now, due to perspective, the ground comes up and blocks most of what we see in the sky. And this is simple perspective, like looking down a corridor, you can't see at the other end, the walls converge and the the, the sky comes down <clears throat> and the ground comes up until they meet in the center. So if we rotate the astro plate, then you can see, it's losing its features, <clears throat> that it's rotating counterclockwise here. And if I bring back the firmament, and look over in this direction, you'll notice that I can see the top half here, but on the bottom half, I can't see it at all. And so if we switch to Stellarium, we can see that looking north, this blue line represents the equator in the sky, or the cutoff point of the astroplate, and the red line represents the ecliptic. So if we move time, we can see that it's counterclockwise in the northern. And when we look south, it's clockwise in the southern. Remember, this blue line separates it. So when we look west, we end up seeing two opposite rotations in, in opposite hemicircles. Northern's counter, southern's clockwise, but together they meet 
as everything sets in the west and rises in the east. So this is simple perspective. Everything's rising from east to west. So when you look south, east is to your left. So it appears clockwise. When you look north, east is to your right. So it appears counterclockwise. And this matches the observations made here. The only difference is you can't see the southern section which is reflecting off the firmament and would appear to be down here. And looking directly south, we would see a chunk of that over there. And then looking west, we would see everything setting. And back north, you can see part of Polaris and some of Ursa Minor and a few other constellations. All right, so if we come back up here, and hopefully the astro plate works with me. I restarted it to see if it'll work better this time. Let's turn on keyframe animation. Okay, so this astro plate rotates 90 degrees every frame, so that completes a full circuit in four frames. So I have every day listed by four frames here from midnight, 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m., midnight, 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m. And they're accurate to Stellarium. So if I come over here to Stellarium and I pull up the date and I go down to January 1st at midnight, get rid of the floor, and we look at where the luminaries are. Let's we'll start with the sun. There it is. The sun is in Sagittarius. And you can kind of see it, but it's between the legs of Sagittarius. So here I've put the sun between the legs of Sagittarius. Same with Mercury, Saturn, Venus. All in the same places. There's, Sat there's Mercury over here. Saturn, Venus, by Scorpius, Mars, and then Jupiter. Oh, we got the moon over here right on the edge. But Jupiter is on the other side of that blue line. <clears throat> it's on the, the north face, while everything else is on the south face. So for here, Jupiter is going to have to be... See, there's the moon right on the edge. But Jupiter is going to have to be on the other side, on the underside, because Jupiter is on the north face, while everything else is on the south face. All right, so I'm going to explain sidereal day and solar day on this geocentric plane model. Uh, a solar day is when the sun completes a full circuit around the North Pole and ends up right back where it started with relation to the Earth plane. A sidereal day is when the edge, a star along the equator of the astroplate or the edge of the astro plate completes a full circuit and back to where it started with relation to the earth plane. Now, a side real day, which is the astro plate rotating, is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds, while a solar day, which is a sun full rotation around the North Pole back where it started compared to the earth plane, is exactly 24 hours. Now, the reason for that is because the sun proceeds along the ecliptic, which is this line right here that passes through the 12 constellations of the zodiac, like... Aquarius, Capricornus, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Libra, Virgo, and then there's another six on the other side. On the northern face, these are the southern face, or the winter solstice, uh, the winter solstice, and since it's January 1st, December 21st would have been about right there, which would have been the December solstice, solstice. and on the other side, right in the center, is the June solstice. All right, so the reason that you have solar and side row days is because in 24 hours, if I just move, skip four frames, the astro plane won't turn because it'll make a full rotation. We'll see that the sun actually proceeded along the ecliptic during that full rotation. So when the sun rotates with the astro plate, it's proceeding, which means going backward, uh, moving opposite the direction of the rotation, so if the astro plate is rotating clockwise, the sun is proceeding counterclockwise. Now the sun and the moon both proceed counterclockwise, and if I move another 24 hours, you'll notice the moon moves a lot, 
while the sun barely moves a little. And another 24 hours, same thing. Moon moves a lot, sun moves a little. And if we come to midnight on the 5th, we see that the sun is almost on the arm of Sagittarius while the moon is in Libra. And if we jump over here to Stellarium, to date and time, and we jump to the 5th, you can see exactly that. The moon is in Libra, and the sun, get that oriented properly, no, it's below us. The sun is on that, that leg of Sagittarius. The first it was here, second, third, fourth, fifth. And so the sun will continue to proceed along the ecliptic, as well as the moon, but the moon moves twice as fast as the sun, so the moon will lap the sun inevitably. Notice how the sun is perfectly on the red line because it's on the ecliptic while the moon is above, is on away from the ecliptic, beside the ecliptic. Um, the moon crosses over the ecliptic right here we're at the edge of the astroplate. So you, it's on this side of the ecliptic now and when it crosses that blue line, which is from the south face to the north face, it'll cross the ecliptic and end up on this side. And then same thing when it's on the below half, it'll cross the ecliptic as while it's crossing the astroplate and end up on the other side. Right here where it crosses is where eclipses happen, lunar and solar. And so I want to make more videos depicting that uh, in this 3D model, but it looks like I'm going to have to completely remake this 3D model because Google SketchUp is having trouble maintaining the features of the Astro Plate. Anyway, that's the video I made wanting to show uh, how the luminaries proceed along the ecliptic. Now the planets do something peculiar. The planets, or the wanderers, the reason they're called wanderers is because they wander along the ecliptic uh, and they're, they're, they look like stars. They're not the sun and moon, which are clearly not stars. Um, for instance, Mercury, we come down here to Mercury. Mercury never strays too far in front or too far behind the sun. But like the moon, Mercury crosses the ecliptic to one side of the ecliptic, goes in front of the sun, crosses back, and then goes behind the sun. Never too far in front or behind. Venus does the same thing, only it goes a little farther in front of and behind the sun. So as the sun is proceeding along the ecliptic, Mercury and Venus are also proceeding with the sun, but then they surpass the sun, and once they stop proceeding, then they retrograde. Once they stop proceeding with the sun, then they retrograde. And all retrograde means is the luminary is now moving the same direction as the rotation of the astroplate. So right now Mercury is in retrograde. Uh, and that's where a lot of astrology talks about retrograde motions uh, of the luminaries. And there was a time when astrology was astronomy. They were one and the same. There was no difference. So Jupiter, for instance, Jupiter and Saturn, they retrograde differently than Mercury and Venus. While Mercury and Venus go around the sun, or never too far in front, never too far behind, crossing the ecliptic, Jupiter and Saturn proceed for about, see, so Jupiter proceeds for about nine months, stops, retrogrades for five months, and then proceeds for nine months. Saturn proceeds for about, I believe it's close to that, like about a year, and then retrogrades for about half a year, something like that, and then proceeds. While Mars proceeds for about three years, retrogrades for three months, proceeds for three years, retrogrades for three months. So it's kind of a difficult concept to grasp. So I'll try to make a better uh, video on retrograde motion of the luminaries with regard to the astral plate once I fix this. Uh, once I fix fix this file in Google SketchUp. So thanks for watching, guys. Quick, I just wanted to show this animation uh, with of the luminaries without the astral plate, so you can see them rotating around the North Pole because they're moving with the astral plate. They're rotating around the North Pole, but they are all proceeding along the ecliptic on the astral plate. So it's kind of some relative motion. Anyway, I'll make more videos about it. Again, thanks for watching.